We have to start complaining more. In this video, I'm going to talk about why and how. Hi, my name's Christine L. Conroy. Welcome to Happy Stuff and Fluff, a channel for women over 50 who are getting happy and growing younger. Okay, so this may seem a strange video for me, a little bit radical even, but I was reading a blog, which I, I tend to do, for women over 50. I like to see what women are talking about and what they're looking for and so on. But the article in this video was all about how we need to stop complaining. Um, I read the article but the further I got into the article, the more kind of incensed I was becoming. It was saying that we, you know, we need to stop complaining about little things and that we need to be grateful and that life's too short and, whoa, back up, back up. Nobody knows more than I do how short life can be. And for me, and I hope for you too, that means quite the opposite to stop complaining. It actually means start complaining. Let me explain. So part of my daughter's, uh, the Charlotte show, my daughter's funeral service, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave a link here about that. She wanted us to play Louis Armstrong singing What a Wonderful World. So what I would like you to do, if you haven't heard that song in a long time, is listen to it. Just sit and listen to it. You will take a big sigh when you listen to it and you will probably appreciate a lot more. Appreciate the people you care about and the things that you see, the trees and all of those kinds of things, which is clearly lovely. We live in a wonderful world. But then what I want you to do is to write down what is stopping you from believing that. What comes to your mind when you listen to that song? What's stopping you from believing that song 100% that we live in a wonderful world? And then I want you to think about not complaining. It's a word I don't like and I will explain as we go along. What I want us to think more along the lines of is expressing your dissatisfaction. Now then, my belief is, and even if this is something very small, like um, going out for dinner, for example, if you do not express your dissatisfaction about something, nothing's going to change, ever. Because, let me give you an example. If you out, go out to dinner, as I did, well, it wasn't actually dinner, it was um, uh, lunchtime. Mr. Kitchen and I were in a restaurant having lunch. Now, wherever you go these days, you're not paying peanuts. I don't, I don't care where you go to eat. You're not paying peanuts. You're paying your hard-earned cash for food and service. So we had the food and I had a salad with croutons in it. I'm not going to tell you where it was. But I went to bite into the crouton and almost broke my tooth. That was the first thing. The actual salad itself was okay, just okay. But I love croutons and when I'm going to spend the calories on a crouton, then, you know, it needs to be a good crouton and it wasn't. Anyway, I ate. And then because we were, um, I was okay with it, the salad was okay, um, I wouldn't have complained about it. Again, let's change that word, because I think in particularly in the UK, we have an issue with complaining. I may be speaking to the converted in America, because I think you're better at it than we are. But um, And then I thought to myself, actually, no, this is important. <laughs> My crouton is important. So when they came over and you get the obligatory, is everything okay? Like this, um, I said... Well, it was okay, but it was only just okay. And I'm afraid the croutons were very hard and the ones I did manage to eat were very chewy. So it wasn't very enjoyable. And then I stopped talking. So the person who was very young and clearly been instructed to say, is everything all right, um, didn't know what to say. So he kind of went, um, oh, 
oh, um, oh, oh, like this. Now, as it happened, his supervisor happened to be walking by and she overheard the conversation and stepped in because she could see this poor chap was struggling. Now, clearly, they haven't trained these people how to deal with someone who isn't happy. But I was not in a uh, mood of any kind. I was simply expressing my dissatisfaction at the food I'd been given. Now, as it happened, um, this lady could not have been more helpful. And she took the food away. (laughs) And I wasn't asking for money back. I didn't want money back. I just wasn't going to answer, yes, everything was fine, when clearly... I didn't feel that it was. As it happened, she came back and she said, the chef tried to eat a crouton and agreed totally with me. And they gave us the whole meal free of charge. Not just my side of it, but the whole meal. Now, two things. Obviously, they didn't need to do that. They went over and above what they needed to do. What did that do? I will go back. I will go back there. Had they not helped me or had they not been interested and just kind of mumbled and walked away, then I probably would not have gone back. Now, being in the retail business myself for over 25 years with Mr Kitchen, I know that if you're providing a service and someone isn't satisfied with it and they don't tell you, it could be a death knell to your business. So think of your complaining or expressing your dissatisfaction as a help to that company, to those people. This is what's happened. This is what I didn't like about it. And um, give them the chance to do something about it. Now, what does that do? The next time they serve the crouton, it's going to be a whole lot better for the next person. We have to stop putting up with mediocrity. This is what I'm saying. If you're the kind of person who would have come away from that restaurant and muttered to your friend, oh, that meal was dreadful, and complained to them, that's the complaining you need to stop. The complaining you need to start is to the right person at the right time asking for the right thing. Those are the three things you need to know before you complain. Is it the right person? What exactly am I expressing my dissatisfaction about and what outcome do I want? Now, as it happened, I did not want my money back. I simply was not going to lie to that um, Or answer it, you know, when somebody says, is everything okay? I wasn't going to say, yes, thank you, it was fine. It was more for my benefit, that, I have to admit. Um, But more and more, increasingly, I am less prepared to put up with mediocrity. And this is what I'm saying about, I mean, why women over 50 should stop complaining? I understand you should stop complaining to the wrong people at the wrong time. We need to start expressing our dissatisfaction in all areas of our lives. You need to do it in a good mood, in a pleasant way, respecting your rights and respecting the person to whom you are speaking, respecting their rights too, so you don't do it in an attacking way or in a defensive kind of way or a challenging way or an emotive way. So if something a little bit more annoying than your croutons not being not being good enough at your meal if it's something else that you are angry about you've got to get rid of the anger first do not express your dissatisfaction whilst you are angry because let's say it's a big company or something like that you're expressing dissatisfaction to and you lose your temper you give them an excuse not to deal with you then they will back off from you and you've lost your argument so so i would say um Don't do this in an emotional state. Don't do it in a challenging way. Express your feelings about something. This is the way I feel about this and leave it to them. Over to you. What are you going to do about it? And then how they respond to you then, you then have a choice about what you're going to do about that. But if we keep accepting litter on the streets is another thing. Now I know these things might seem small but these are things that you you know lots of people say well what one person complaining about something is not going to make a difference oh yes it is yes it is and if you're a person who um you know who feels shy about saying you didn't like something or any of those things you're helping that person you're helping someone else if you were to pick up the phone and phone your local council and say there's an awful lot of litter on the street in my area Um, and it's making the area unpleasant. 
it's making the area unpleasant for everybody, not just for you. So you're helping other people by doing that. And as I say, as long as you are pleasant, respect everybody's rights, and you express yourself clearly and what you want, you have a right to do that. And you are helping to make our world or keep our world a wonderful world. I'm not talking about getting involved in politics at this moment in time or any of those big things that we'd all like to change. Right now I'm talking about the small things that happen to you on a daily basis. The small things that happen to you in a relationship that you are dissatisfied with. I'm talking about the small things. Start there and start gently expressing your dissatisfaction and see what happens. That's the first step in keeping this world a wonderful world. As ever, let me know what you think in the comments and I'm going to leave a link so that you can go to the website and sign up for our weekly newsletter. That would be great to be able to communicate there. In the meantime, I'll see you next time. And until then, remember, on the happy stuff and flow, we are getting happy.